So when we're doing explosive-based work for wrestling, we've got to focus on some of those key elements. And we have to understand what are the key elements when we're talking about wrestling. We know we've got to have absolute strength. We know we have to have relative strength. We know that if we're in season, we've got to have really, really good strength endurance. But that's one factor now that we can sort of take out of the equation when we're talking about off-season explosive training. When we're in the off season for wrestlers, I believe it's very, very important to focus a lot on weaknesses. And one of those areas that I tend to find that's consistent with wrestlers tends to be absolute strength and it tends to be explosive work. Wrestlers love to do endurance work. They love to do cardio. They love to do conditioning, but they might struggle to work on their maximal strength and they might struggle to work on that explosiveness. And so that's where this off-season explosive workout comes into play. What we're gonna try and do as a strength coach is we've gotta to try to develop a weakness. We've got to try and develop a weakness that will lead to greater performance on the mat. And so when we're analyzing a wrestler's off-season training, focusing a lot on explosive capability can lead to serious domination on the mat. We've got to think about the strength work that will in turn transfer to the explosiveness. And then on top of that, explosive skill work that we can hone in on and develop over the off-season that will then transfer tremendously over to the mat. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming an explosive freak, you wanna learn how to be more athletic, how to transfer that weight room strength, take it over to your performance on the mat, in the field, whatever sport it is that you're doing, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you stand on top of that podium. So when we're doing off-season base training, explosive off-season work for wrestlers, the first thing that I like to focus on is how well do my wrestlers do explosive work in the weight room? How well do they technically coordinate? How well do they handle the Olympic lifts? How well do they snatch? How well do they clean? And do they have a technical mindset? So that's one area right off the bat. I believe some wrestlers, when they're a little bit younger, they're very aggressive and they know how to apply a ton of force through aggressiveness, right? but they don't understand yet how to apply force through technical work, through technical understanding. And this is where we like to see that little bit of a mind shift. When wrestlers change their mindset from super, super aggressiveness to technically coordinating with that aggressiveness in nature, now they can really, really start to be super explosive and hold better positions when they're being more explosive. So right off the bat, what I like to focus on in my first exercise is I wanna get some higher rep cleans, okay? So what we like to do is cleans off of two boxes or one box, and this is gonna mimic that hip angle and the knee flexion that we see when wrestlers are on the mat. When I'm saying higher reps, I'm not saying reps of 10, and that's a lot of strength coaches will do those Olympic lifts at sets of 10. What I wanna see is I will never go over sets of five, but what I wanna see is I want my athletes to build their weight over three to four sets. So we might do three to four doubles to really start to potentiate that nervous system, to get the wrestlers to feel the movement of the power clean or of the full clean that we're gonna be doing off of the boxes. And then what I like to do is sit there and say, look, the goal, the purpose of this session, of this first movement, we are trying to establish repetitive explosiveness. Now, technical coordination, I define as a static contraction. So right off the box, that's a static contraction followed by a dynamic contraction. That would be when we make contact, followed by absorption of energy. So that elastic energy, when we catch a clean, now we're absorbing that, if we're in the hole. Then the fourth aspect, now it's a contraction based around absolute strength. We're gonna try and stand that up. Then we're gonna drop that clean and we're gonna repeat that. And I wanna repeat that at least five times at a very top end. So if we can do let's say three to four sets of two, followed by two sets of five. I want those two sets of five to be very, very difficult. 
if we have wrestlers that can express this power output over a longer period of time, four to five reps, and they can do it rapidly over 30 to 45 seconds, now I know when the season comes around, they're gonna be able to handle scrambles a lot better. They're gonna be more explosive from various positions, and that's gonna transfer really, really well to winning different positions when they're going up against serious opponents. So we got our weight room work done. We've got some really good potentiation from the higher rep cleans. Not only is that stimulating our nervous system, but it's also just waking up the athlete and it's going to make the athlete more technically minded and stronger, especially if they're doing these as full cleans, they're gonna be catching that in the hole. That's also going to trigger some absolute strength development. We're gonna rest for about two to five minutes after that higher rep cleans. And now we're gonna start doing some body weight explosive work. This is one of my favorite off season wrestling exercises. It's all body weight and it's all about rapid rate of coordination. Wrestlers that dominate have a rapid rate of coordination. They are very explosive and that's what happens. Their body can coordinate very, very quickly. So when we're utilizing this exercise, it doesn't have a fancy name. It's simply, you do a side jump, followed by another side jump, then that single leg drives back. Then when your back leg plants, we're gonna sprint forward. So it's creating multiple different angles that we're working through. And that's where it transfers over really, really well to the sport of wrestling. If we can think about applying force on numerous different angles through numerous different planes and then applying a ton of speed to that, now we can start to take those strength gains that we're developing in the weight room. And when we can develop our strength to a certain level, and then we do that speed work, that explosive work, now we take all those different angles we utilize that big engine, those big muscles that we're building, and now we can apply it very, very rapidly. And that's the big factor here. I like to do the side jump, side jump, single leg back, sprint forward for five sets of two reps on each. You do two reps to the right side, two reps to the left side, and then you're going to take about a two minute rest. So this is gonna take a little bit of time. And because we're doing both sides, it can be quite fatiguing, but it's important to think about reacting quickly and changing direction quickly. And that's a big concept that wrestling needs to understand is that if we get stronger and then we learn how to utilize that strength through different changes of direction, through change of level, now that's gonna lead to really good speed on the mat and a lot more explosiveness. That next key factor behind our explosive off-season wrestling workout, we're going into Gwiz stair jumps and what I call as the Jan Jump Series. Our model here during this workout is Jan Johnson. He's a two-time AAA, PIAA state champion here in the state of Pennsylvania. He wrestled at Penn State. He also played football at Penn State. But Jan's explosiveness during the Jan Jump Series and then utilizing a movement that we created specifically for Nick Gwizdowski, two-time world bronze medalist Nick Gwizdowski. This is a movement that we created to try and improve his penetration step. So the Gwiz stair jumps is gonna be a unilateral movement. When we're going up the steps, ideally you'll be using steps. If you can't use steps, you can use a box. But one of the big factors behind using steps is that as you jump repetitively, it's a little bit easier on the body to react from that unilateral perspective. I like to start with that back knee on the pad and that back foot should be elevated. We wanna plant with that front foot and drive forward with a little bit of height and then repeat that same leg as we jump. Ideally, we'll do three jumps on the right leg, three jumps on the left leg. We're gonna rest about a minute, then we're gonna get into the Jan Jump Series. What's unique behind the Jan Jump Series is that we're doing angled jumps from a unilateral perspective, followed by a bilateral explosiveness. So we can see left leg, left leg, right leg, right leg, land bilaterally, explode over the hurdle, okay? So these two movements can really challenge the body's knowledge. And that's the whole factor here is that wrestling is an open skilled sport, but typically we have to train it from a closed skilled perspective in the weight room. But one of those key factors is that if we can train it explosively from multiple different angles, now it makes that transition from the closed skilled to the open skilled on the mat a lot easier. So if we're doing the Gwiz stair jumps to improve that penetration step, then we're doing the Jan jump series to improve that rapid coordination from multiple different angles. 
now that body, now that engine that we've developed from heavier squats, from heavier unilateral work, from, from benches, from pull-ups, all that stuff, now that body has more strength and it has a ton of explosiveness. And so I like to utilize the Gwiz stair jumps, supersetting with the jam jump series for four sets, and we'll do one repetition to each side. So that means three jumps on the left, three jumps on the right, and then through the jam jump series on each side one time, and then we'll repeat that for four total sets. Now finally, we're gonna finish off this beast explosive off-season workout with Kamara lunges and then jump lunges to the box. And so when you see the Kamara lunge, so Jan's walking through this Kamara lunge, he's planting that front foot, he's gonna get just past 90 degrees or right around 90 degrees, and he's gonna hold that isometrically for one, two, and then he's gonna walk forward again and do that again on the opposite leg. And some of the key factors here that I like to think about with the Kamara lunge is that, think about those weights bouncing all over the place. It's gonna force you to train your trunk. It's gonna force you to control your abs, your obliques, your hips, your groin, your upper back, everything all together. And on top of that, it's in a split position. This is very similar to being in our stance in wrestling. So when we hold that position, now those kettlebells or dumbbells are bouncing all over the place, but we have better trunk control. Now our opponent can't manipulate us. They can't control our trunk. That's the big key factor. That's one of the big weaknesses that I see is that strength coaches who are working with wrestlers, they're not training the trunk as dynamically as they need to. They need to train the trunk of wrestlers very similar to how we need to train our sprinters. Once a wrestler has dynamic trunk control, now they can move very, very effectively and they can be very, very explosive on the mat. Watch Jordan Burroughs when he's taking a double. He controls his trunk so well. His center of mass is so controlled and that's what makes him so explosive. That's what makes him hit these positions very well. Same with Jaden Cox, Kyle Dake. All these guys can control their trunk extremely well even when they're tying up with their opponents. And that's where the Kamara lunge comes into play. Now, we're gonna do that for about four reps on each leg. Then we're gonna rest about a minute. Give your body a little bit of a break, but now it's potentiated. All the perturbations from the dumbbells, the kettlebells shaking on that bamboo bar, or if you want, you can use a 10 kilo bar. It's shaking all over the place. Give it a little bit of time, 60 seconds. Walk over to a 20 to 24 inch box. That outside leg should be leaning. Okay, now we're gonna explode and we wanna land on that box. Ideally, we'll also pause for a very brief period in that split position when we drop off the box. Now we're training that explosiveness that's also potentiating our nervous system from doing the Kamara lunge. So when we have wrestlers that are explosive in those split positions, it transfers really, really well over to the mat. And that's the key factor here. We're gonna finish off this workout, four sets of four on each leg, then four sets of three on each leg with a jump lunge to the box. Rest about two minutes after each set. We're gonna finish that off. Make sure that you're recovering well. Make sure you're doing your mobility. Make sure that you're eating well. Make sure that you're taking care of your body in the off season so that you can continue to get stronger and become a more explosive wrestler. So if you want this template, if you want this printed up, you can take it with you to the weight room. You can click on the link down below in the description. You can head over to garagefink.com, put in your email address. We'll ship it right over to you so that you can take this with you and help you improve your explosive capability on the mat. If you want more information about wrestling-based training, you can click on this card right here. And until next time, guys, peace.